Hey, this is a match once again. What about the end of the video? This is a paid request from Dark Metal Spider. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for Mysterious Island, a 1961 film that is based on a Jules Verne novel, which I haven't read. And the star of this film are the special effects. And particularly the stop motion effects by Ray Harryhausen. Now Ray Harryhausen, this guy is very much influenced by Willis O'Brien who worked on the original Team Con film. In fact, worked with Willis O'Brien on Mighty Joe Young way back in the day, which I do quite enjoy that film. And throughout the years, Ray Harryhausen did stop motion on films like The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, Jason the Argonauts, The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, among many others. Uh, Clash of the Titans in 1981, which I think might have been the last film he was a part of. That's when other special fest came a bit more into the, the fray. But I'm a sucker for stop motion effects. I love the way they look. Because it's like, it's anime, but it's not anime. It's anime, but you tell there's something textual. There's textual elements to it. It is very unique. And to me, it's a very interesting format. That's how you just, you don't see much nowadays. Because if they try to do it nowadays, there are people that will laugh at it. Or go, oh, well, that's not realistic. And I'm like... Neither is a lot of the CGI used nowadays, but at least a lot of stop motion, there's a, there's a charm to it. Now, while it's nice to see the stop motion work in this, which details giant crabs, giant chickens, I don't know what the hell it was, chickens, roosters, something like that? I really don't know what the hell it was. Giant bees. It's one of those films where, at the end of the day, I wasn't a fan of this one. And there are those films that I do enjoy, for the most part, because of the effects by Ray Harryhausen. But I might Joe Young, because I like Joe, the, the character itself. He was, he was a special vet, but he really became a character unto himself. And I, I thought that the characters, the, the pacing had a bit of a zippy energy to it. This one, though, the stop motion animation was good, but what he was told to animate was kind of disappointing. Just one thing, oh, the Jason Argonauts, these skeletons coming to life and these creatures and... Or in this film, UFOs, and here it's like a giant crab, really? A giant chicken rooster, where the hell it is, really? A giant bee, okay, kind of cool. But, I don't know, compared to other Ray Harryhausen effects-led films, this one for me felt a bit lower tier on that front. And the story I thought was meh. The, the actors were okay. Uh, what was the lead guy? His name was Michael Craig. They're alright. But at the same time. I didn't hate them. I didn't love them. These characters. I was very. I have a very mundane reaction to them. I would say the reaction I got the most out of was Herbert Lom. Herbert Lom as Captain Nemo. But the problem is he comes in like an hour and 14 minutes. And by that point, there's like 15, 20 minutes left of the movie. I would say at least like 20, about 20 minutes left of the movie. So he comes in very late in the game. And he's to be the best actor and potentially the most interesting character. Actually, the most interesting character is Captain Nemo. But... I don't mind the idea where we're dealing with Union soldiers. Because it takes place in 1865. These Union soldiers 
or in a confederate camp they escape where they take these steps and they rework it so that when the confederates are climbing down they're walking down it falls apart they slip and the fight breaks out they're able to knock them out get this hot air balloon and it's pretty much four Union soldiers and then there's a guy who's a confederate now at the beginning there's a bit of hostility of you know you do what you say you do what we say we'll throw you overboard fine I'll do it you know what I'll do it as long as where we land wherever we land we'll split and go out different ways go our different directions but when they land they land on this island and pretty much that's the last time they're worried about the confederate guy meaning there's never really any other times where the confederate they're should we trust this guy are we sure about this guy I mean he is the confederate you know he is you know the enemy or this rising tension do I trust this guy do I not trust this guy he did give me my word but should I do use to that word because he's a confederate that never really comes into play when they're on the island they're together and there's really no tension between the characters there's no drama between the characters there's really no story between the characters uh, the hint of one is I mean you got the leader Michael Craig you have this other guy who's a bit younger and I guess this the story with them is the first or, or so creature they the crab he's mad at himself that he was too scared so in the second one this chicken rooster whatever thing he's able to jump gun ho and stab this thing with a knife uh, one guy is black I say that because that's really the only character Capote has that he's black and then the other guy he's kind of a bit more of the maybe a little bit more tendency to make jokes and then you have the confederate guy again there's never any tensions even of one of the four going I don't trust this guy and like they don't they don't really do anything with that I find it funny that like half of the creatures they kill they eat it I guess it made sense but it's like they're it's not like they're fighting three or four or five crabs it's one crab now again when it happens I do like the stop-motion effects I say I do think they have a charm to it especially whenever they grab someone which they use practical effects they'll cut to like the animated person flailing, flailing around and like you could you could tell it's not a real person, but at the same time, the, I don't know, them animating a real person in stop motion does give a bit of smirks and, and chuckles to me, but in a good way. But they use these spears to fight the trap, and they're able to tip it over, and this hot scalding water, and hey, we got food, time to eat it. Later on, there's this chicken rooster thing. And the guy stabbing in the neck goes through this fence. It lies dead. Once again, they cook it. They eat it. I did. It just makes sense because why not? It's an animal. They need food. I'm surprised they didn't eat the bee. You know, I'm surprised they didn't kill the bee and eat that. And like I said, there's not much to the story other than they fight the tree. You know, they're on the island. Then they fight the crab. And they're on the island and they find these two women and one is kind of a hello there I'm a stuffy English woman and I'm talking like this but stuffy not like she's not being bitchy or anything it is oh my god what are we doing here now like you tell maybe a type of person that came from a rich family in England or something Oh dear, oh brother. I guess they, she wouldn't say oh brother, but oh dear, what shall we do here today? And then you have this younger girl, who of course is going to be with the younger guy. 
But even then, like, you don't get a whole lot of character work between those characters and the men. Maybe I should be thankful that it isn't like, okay, it's going to be two guys like the girl, and then they fight over the girl, and you're thinking, oh, is it really time to fight? You need to get the hell off the island. So I guess I should be happy they don't go into that trope. But I guess it's really not much of anything. They go into a cave. It tries to do some cheap jump steers, or maybe not cheap, but it's like, there's a skeleton, it falls on someone. <laughs> Later on they find a chest, and there's supplies in it. There's a chicken, they kill it, and then they eat it. The the younger guy and the younger girl, they find, really it's like a honeycomb, a nest, and there's a bee chasing after them. They able to escape, they fall down this tunnel, and they find the Nautilus, Captain Nemo's you know, sub. Around that same time, a pirate ship comes by. They start firing at the pirates. Until ultimately, someone fires at the pirate ship and knocks it down and sinks it. Which, I guess, drowns all the rest of the pilot pirates. Because <clears throat> you think some of them would have swam to the shore. And they'd have to still be worried about some of these pirates. Because, I mean, it's far away, but... There'd still be close enough for them to swim up. Some of them, at least. It's hard, it's hard for me to believe every single one of them drowned. But, I mean, I guess so. Because they don't care. There's going to be some other tension now. that you got, It's not as many pirates, but there's going to be some pirates on there, and they're pissed off, and they don't want to fight these guys. And then we also have this volcano in the background that's ready to erupt. And then we have Captain Nemo, who we find... He comes out of the water and wants to help our lead characters. But no, I guess every pirate who wasn't shot, he just drowned there. And none of them decided to swim up shore. And then the last chunk is pretty much this plan of the ship that, you know... I try to remember why the Nautilus can't go anywhere... I mean, I guess he wants to have it there so no one else finds the Nautilus, but it's like, well, is there really no way to fix this sub to just have it go and drop these guys off and go back to where you came from? I guess not. So instead, the plan is to patch the hole of the ship you blew up, the pirate ship you sank, and then... Like, pump it or something? And then later on, oh, that's not going to work. Then the lead guy comes with the idea, well, we'll use our hot air balloon, put it in there, fix it, turn it up, and then it'll bring the power ship back up. I think it was kind of cool to see these weird inventions of Captain Nemo. Which you don't see a whole lot of, but like, there's this one laser thing. that Apparently he could breathe underwater with these big seashells. Like seashell tanks. I don't know how the hell that works. You think at least you'd have like a hose up to the top. But apparently you just put this seashell thing and for some reason you could breathe underwater. I, mean, I don't know how the hell that works. Voodoo magic. I don't know. Maybe it's fucking voodoo magic. But somehow, it, I know it's fancy, but I'm like, what? Give me something. And then you're thinking, okay, well, it's Ray Harryhausen. Ray Harryhausen going to be some big creature. And instead, it's just like a squid that's just a, a rubber monster squid thing. And they shoot at it. It kind of goes away. They get on the ship. It's been risen. Spoiler alert. Sorry, spoilers. And then Captain Nemo, who helped them. Sally, the thing's crumbling. He dies. Him and Nala's get buried. Volcano has been blasting. And the people, none of them have died. And they go off thinking that Captain Nemo helped them. 
So you feel bad because Herbert Long, to me, Herbert Long was the best actor in the movie. He doesn't come in until an hour and 14 minutes in. So he doesn't have a whole lot of screen time. And then to me, he's the best actor and he dies at the end. He's the only one that of the good guys that dies at the end. So if you're a fan of the Captain Nemo character, it's like, oh, well, I got Captain Nemo. Well, he's not in it for a lot. And then he dies. You go, well, fuck. <laughs> I would, if you're interested in Captain Nemo, you'd maybe be disappointed in it, but... Like I said, the characters really aren't much. The the effect scenes, to me, are few and far in between. There's really not much to the story. Like I said, the Ray Harry Hall, House, Ray Harryhausen, I only think of those three things, and... They're nice to look at, but it's nothing like the the, the behemoths of creatures and dinosaurs or UFOs or even later on, Clash of Titans, the Kraken. Release the Kraken. I did. The toilet's over there. But it's... Doesn't seem grand. Doesn't seem big for this mysterious island. They never really do explain why all these creatures are so big. Hey, think there's gonna be other big creatures? There's not. I guess other than the squid, but that, I guess because it's underwater, so I didn't use much stop motion there. But I just, like I said, maybe there's more to the story with the Confederate guy. Will he betray him? Will he not betray him? Is he on the level? Is he not on the level? Can we trust him? Can we not trust him? Like I said, there's really not much to the story and. Like the two girls, I don't even know why the two girls were there. They didn't really bring anything to the table other than the older lady screws up by bringing the guns and trips and one of them falls and fires. So it alerts the pirates that people are there and there's a little shootout. The girl and the guy, younger ones, I guess they fall up, but they don't really have a lot of, maybe I should be faithful for this, not a lot of romantic scenes together. So, uh, like I said, the acting's not that bad. The music. I think the music is Bernard Herrmann. The music is pretty epic sounding. Especially the opening. Like, when the movie opens, you have this grand musical score. I think it is Bernard Herrmann who would do the score to Psycho, among many other movies. Or he had done, uh, yeah, Psycho. The Alfred Hitchcock film. And he, he brought a... He made the feel, film feel much grander than it was, in my opinion. So I want to make sure I get there. I think it is Bernard Herrmann. I just want to make sure. Sorry about this. And I should be more prepared, I know. But I know this is one of Dark Metal Spire's favorite films. I wouldn't say I hated it. Like, if I'm being honest, I wouldn't say I hated the film. I mean, like I said, these creature features from back to the day with the stop motion, at least there's an intrigue and, and a charm to it. I've seen much, 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 much worse movies. So, part of me wants to say it's okay, but... At the same time, was I really a big fan of this? Not really. But this it's kind of harmless as well. Directed by Cy Enfield. Released date December 20, 1961. 6.7 IMDb. Yeah, I, would, I would give it a bit lower than that. I, mean, I think the whole I think the Union Confederate soldier thing that could have been utilized a lot more. I mean, after the opening, that's pretty much forgotten, and it could have been anybody. Yeah, it is Bernard Herrmann, who is a great composer, and worked Alfred Hitchcock, The Birds. North by Northwest, Psycho. Yeah, 
Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver. That's right. He did that one as well. That's true. Yeah. So, very accomplished musician or composer, as you say. So he definitely brought a, a nice level to the music in this. I said, I wish Captain Nemo was came in earlier in the movie. I said, I wish there was some again bit of story with the characters to make a bit more intrigue to the story. I wish when you have Ray Harryhausen, it would have been like some big one or two or so monsters of stop motion quality. Against of the the rubber octopus, you know, squid thing. But, you know, what did he do? It wasn't awful. wasn't terrible. But I can't say I was big on it. So, with that said, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.